Oh my God, I cannot wait to tell you about this book. This is incredible. You got to read it. Let's talk about it. All right, guys, today I'm talking about Cultish. It's uh, written by Amanda Montel, subtitled The Language of Fanaticism. This young lady is really impressive. I, uh, the more I think about uh, just this book and how she went about it, I, uh, I get more and more tickled by just uh, her, you know, her uh, handling of the topic. She's a writer and language scholar from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, she's done other works like uh, the critically acclaimed Word Slut, A Feminist Guide to Taking Back the English Language. She appeared in Marie Claire, Cosmopolitan, Glamour. Uh, I think she's quite young. I Don't quote me, but I think I looked this up. I think she was around 27 when she wrote this. It's a fairly new book. Uh, this came out in, when did this come out? 2021, so only a few years old now. Um, and it, she handled it really well. It, it, she wasn't, um, it's not terribly like academic, although she certainly has credentials and authority in that topic. She handles this whole word cult with the kind of uh, delicacy and tact that it needs. Obviously, I mean, this is booktube, right? When we're talking about books and films, you know, we hear that old, uh, that old term, you know, cult classic. Uh, so, you know, we can talk about cults like that, which are, uh, you know, innocuous, they're benign. They're not, they're not harmful in any way, unless you're, unless you're like a, a cult fan of, you know, Mein Kampf or something, and you really agree with that book, then, then the cult becomes a little more than that, right? But moving into uh, other territory, like, uh, you know, fitness clubs or uh, multi-level marketing. You know, for example, when I was a young adult, I think I was around uh, 16 to 18, somewhere in there, I was approached by um, uh, by a family member, actually, surprisingly, because they're, you know, they were, my family is fairly on guard, especially with MLM. And she was trying to get me into World Financial Group, uh, which is a multi-level platform. Uh, I know there are some people in that group that make money at it uh, you know they do really really well they're selling financial products uh, you know I'm not going to put them in other categories perhaps like Amway but let's face it they're they're in the ballpark right uh, just the the pyramid uh, format of these uh, organizations uh, obviously they're still not the worst not even Amway is the worst uh, but I'm giving you a gradation here and this is how she approaches it coming from sort of a cult background myself i was involved in a religion uh the jehovah's witnesses and you know there was sort of like an octo pope i call them uh you know eight men i think it's 10 now in the governing body uh and they were unquestionable really that they, they were they they didn't they would say we're not uh infallible but you know when you couple that with other statements that you know they're really above criticism and all the rest of it they're infallible um so I have something of a, of a baseline to compare this to. Surprisingly, she only mentions the Jehovah's Witnesses once in here. But now we're getting more into dangerous type cults, right? Scientology, Mormonism, uh, even even regular churches like like uh, you know the Catholics qualify as a cult. You know, of course, it very much depends on its adherence. If we're just talking about your Sunday church goer, you know, loving grandma who has a sort of vague interest or, or belief in God and uh, the Catholic Church kind of speaks to her through her architecture and art and and uh, archetype. You know, like I don't have any problems with that sort of a person. I wouldn't say they're in a cult, a dangerous death cult or something like that. But, you know, if you're very orthodox Catholic who is, uh, you know, believes the Pope is, uh, is above question, yeah, you're in a cult, and I don't mind telling you that. Uh, you know, and then they go into other categories. Again, we're still not at the worst. You know, the worst would be like Jim Jones and David Koresh and uh, Charles Manson, and and I'm sorry to say it too, but Trump, Donald Trump. You know, how much is uh, the cult of personality in in that uh, end of politics? Uh, not to say that the establishment doesn't have its problems. Of course it does, uh, but the the cultish personality is extremely dangerous and and you can see a direct connection between what is spoken and the performative acts that follows that uh, from those in his base 
So she doesn't spend too much time on that, probably because she doesn't want to alienate people. She doesn't care to alienate people the way that I, I just don't give a shit anymore. I'm going to tell Trump is a cult. I'm sorry to say it. But what I liked about how she went about this is seeing in the subtitle the language of fanaticism. So often we're talking about uh, cults of personality. You know, the, the generally there's a charismatic leader or leaders. And she says that's not necessarily the only uh, criterion for identifying a cult. Very often it's the language they use. And then she even gives some examples of some of the people she had interviewed and the language that they would use, uh, you know, they even gave sort of a sample paragraph of, of a, just a generic conversation that she would have with a fellow believer. This is the person she would interview. And it was, you know, like, what the hell are you talking about? This is such a unique parlance. And I certainly understand a little bit about that with my background, with Jehovah's Witnesses. You know, I could say things like, you know, out in the field, I spoke to a very spiritual type person, uh, you know, but I haven't been able to reach her since. I think she's kind of hiding when I knock on the door because, uh, you know, maybe the seed fell on the wrong soil. You know, that's a very common sort of expression among the witnesses. And any witness would hear that and they'd be like, oh, yeah, you're talking about the seed in the Gospels. Uh, you know, and the various soil types that it can fall on. For an outsider who knows nothing about the Gospels or about the witnesses, and there's tons of things like that, like like terms like the last days and great tribulation and things like that, you would think, what the hell are you talking about? You're fucking nuts. I do have a lot of embarrassment thinking back to that. I wonder how many people would listen into my conversations with my fellow believers and think, are you whack, you know? Uh, so I really enjoyed this book. It's, um, it's not difficult to read. The pages are small. Uh, you know, there's lots of breaks between. Um, and it's only, what? Uh, after the end notes, it's 310 pages-ish. So uh, you could probably read it in a day if you, were, if you were committed to it. I can't recommend it enough, especially in, with the rise of not just Trumpism, but Something else that she speaks of, another new term I really love, is conspirituality. So there's this uh, rise of conspiracy theory, uh, which ranges from anything anti-vax, uh, COVID denial, uh, to, you know, uh, questioning Egyptology and, and, you know, ancient civilizations. And, and then also the New Age pseudo-treatments, uh, you know, alternative medicines. Uh, I mean, look at how... It really only took, after Trump endorsed it, uh, people to jump on the bandwagon and say, oh, take ivermectin. You know, I know people in my own, in my own social circle who are skeptical of the vaccines. And, and, you know, it's like, if anything could even remotely be COVID, oh, well, you better take ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine. Uh, and it's like, you're not a doctor. What the hell do you know? And, and you really do see a rise of these type of people. Uh, there were some things that I disagreed with her in here. In fact, this is worthwhile to tell as a matter of criticism. She brings up somebody uh, that I, I still like to this day. I'm not like devoted to him or anything like that. Um, Joe Dispenza. Now, the guy has definitely taken some liberties. Who hasn't in, that, in, in this field, in the field of medicine? Um, you know, just because there's a dominant, reliable methodology uh, and sort of a materialist bias within the sciences, medicine in particular, that doesn't mean that, um, uh, you know, the Western approach is altogether unimpeachable. And it doesn't mean you can't find some, some merit in alternative approaches to medicine. Uh, you know, meditation and, and uh, Jeffrey Rediger is another guy, she doesn't mention him, but, you know, went through the Western academic route, but says like, hey guys, we've got a little bit of a blind spot here, you know, and, and we should we should look into some of these, uh, you know, spontaneous remission stories and try to find some uh, commonalities among them. Uh, so, you know, Joe Dispenza, I definitely see the, the cultish uh, propensity there. I don't think he's, he tries to be or sees himself as a cult leader, but Sometimes cults are defined by how uh, the adherents perceive him. I think Jordan Peterson is a cult, for example. He can't, he, and yet he's made sense in the past, especially in the 2015-2016 era. 
Not everything he said was complete nonsense. He can make sense on a few topics. But look at how, you know, with the, the rise of the echo chamber, uh, the echo chamber that he's in, sort of like you know, Elon Musk, you know, these guys get really embedded in their, in their ideology and they see nothing but affirmation at every corner. And they're embraced as a cult leader. You know, does it mean you should dismiss everything they say? No, not at all. But it certainly should make you question, uh, you know, your level of fealty. And, you know, if there's a lot of peer pressure in your particular group to follow this guy, you might want to uh, be a little extra critical and, and, and see what, what are the dangers of this particular philosophy. Uh, so we can, we can identify cults not necessarily on the cult leader. It's not the fault of the cult leader. I certainly think that's the case of Joe Dispenza. Yeah, he's made some, he's taken some liberties about things, but on the whole, I think he's got a lot of merit to bring to the table. I don't take his word with any papal authority. You know, it's always contrasted with uh, other people, uh, you know, who both agree with him and disagree with him. So, but just be careful, you know, and don't, don't get yourself embedded in, in these groups where there's, you know, your, your ability to disagree is completely stifled. Uh, that's all I would, I would recommend. Uh, so yeah, you know, there's room for disagreement here. You know, she would probably place them pretty high up in the, in the danger, uh, the, the dangerous cults, uh, end of the gradation that I'm speaking. Um, but you know, she does mention in the end, and this is some of the, the care and precision that I appreciated about Amanda Montel was she said, we shouldn't allow our hesitancy and suspicion of cults prevent us from human connections, you know, and, and wherever they may be found. Uh, you know, you want to obviously rule out groups like the KKK, but groups that are certainly not as uh, harmful, uh, there may be sort of cultish elements within it. You know, we don't want to be so closed-minded as to shut ourselves down to other ways of being and, and other associates that we could have. So I just thought she was so balanced about this, and uh, and I really enjoyed the book. So if you read this, let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. If you haven't read it, please tell me if I've convinced you to. I hope my enthusiasm rub rubs off on you in this particular book, because I just can't recommend it enough. I think it did get five stars. If not, then maybe just slightly below it. Um, I look forward to talking to you below in the comments, and thanks for stopping by. Hey everyone, I hope you liked this video. If you want more like the one you just watched, click the suggested video on this screen. Make sure you subscribe, and to connect with me on my other platforms, my handles are linked below in the description, alright? Take care, peeps. Till next time.